In a recent video, I shot this gun right here, my Savage Axis 2 XP and 6.5 Creedmoor, out to a thousand yards. And I had a lot of guys commenting on how impressed they were with the rifle. A lot of other guys were commenting on how impressed they were with the stock and the paint job that I did to it. How did you do it? How much did it cost? Well, in today's video, that's what we're going to cover. As we take this stock right here from my Savage Mark II FVSR and recreate the entire process. We're going to go through this step by step, show you how it's done. And oh, by the way, the price, eight bucks. Stick around. All right, we've got our rifle stock here on the table and we're gonna do some work to it here in just a second. But before we do, let's tell you exactly how and why this only costs $8 to do. It comes down to the two elements that you need to make the paint job work. That is the paint, We've got Rust-Oleum Camouflage here in Khaki. Um, Krylon also makes some, it's very similar. Um, I've used it as well as this Rust-Oleum. I like both. It just depends on what's available to you. And they're around the same price. This was about 550 for the can, and you can pick whatever color you want. This is Khaki, they've also got varying shades of green, some brown, some black, and so forth. So basically whatever works for you to give you the effect that you want on your rifle. Uh, the other thing you're going to want is a way to mask this rifle, and what I've chosen to use is about a $2.50 bale of jute twine. This stuff is about 208 feet, and it's generally used for gardening and stuff like that, uh, crafts and whatnot. But it's very cheap, very easy to use, very fibrous, so it gives you that sort of rough line that you want for something like this. If it's going to be a sort of a camo, you want to blend into either grass or desert or whatever, uh, you want some, in my opinion, you want some sort of rough lines. Sharp lines, I don't like as much. So, yeah, the rough lines are really nice looking. So this is the masking we're going to use, and this is the paint we're going to use. Those of you who don't care to watch the rest of the video, you kind of get what's going to go, what's going to happen from this point forward. Feel free to go get your stuff and get to work. But the rest of you, let me show you how we prep this rifle stock and how we actually get the wrapping process done. Done, and of course the uh, the final spray painting. So to start, we want to prep this rifle stock. So let me show you a quick thing about the Mark II FVSR, which applies to this rifle, maybe not to the one you've got. It has this little metal plate here, and that is where the magazine well is. So this black metal plate, we want to make sure that this is removed from the rifle. I don't want to have that kind of wiggling around. I, as you can see here, I've kind of retained it to the stock with a little bit of Velcro tie just to make sure that I don't lose it. But we want to remove this because a couple reasons, you know, it's a different surface. We want to treat it differently than we treat the rest of the rifle. And from my opinion, I think it actually looks nicer if you don't paint this part. You're free to do it, obviously. But I like to leave that black and kind of let it sort of accent and contrast uh, with the, uh, the black barrel and other black components. And so the stock will be, you know, whatever camo color I choose, but all the metal hardware I'm going to take off and leave that clean exactly the way it is. So that's one thing we're going to want to do first. Let's pull that piece off. So go ahead and unwrap that Velcro. I'm going to set that plate aside. All right, next, we can go ahead and address that butt stock, or sorry, the, uh, the butt plate. That's easy. Then lastly, we wanna get off these, these uh, sling swivels. And to remove those, I've just got a little Allen wrench I'll stick in there. All right, there we go. There's one other thing I wanna do to it. I wanna give this a nice washing with some palm olives, some kind of dishwashing soap to get grease and any other dust off of it. That way the paint will properly adhere and also there won't be any dust specks or anything like that uh, before we start to spray paint it. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's not fun to watch. Let's say it's done as of right now. Hey, look at that. We've got a nice clean rifle stock and somebody around here must have a brain because it's laying on top of some blue blue shop towels, probably to protect it from all the dust and dirt underneath it on the shop mat and on the shop table. Cool. Great. We are ready to start wrapping it, or are we? Actually, I've got one other thing I want to do. We're going to take these screws from that buttstock plate, and we're going to reinsert them just enough that they're sort of anchored in place. You're going to understand why here in just a second. Some of you guys are probably guessing the reason. But we've got those in just enough. I don't need to screw them in all the way or use the drill. Uh, but yeah, that'll work. So we're gonna do a lot of this twine tying in time lapse 
because that's going to be a lot easier to watch. However, before I do that, I want to point out, guys, you can make this as detailed as you want to do it. Wrap it as many times around as you want to. Do a really, you know, sort of spare, simple version of it. Whatever floats your boat, whatever looks good to you. As for me, I don't know. I guess I'm somewhere in between, uh, but I'm going to wrap this thing up real nice. I'm going to do it, tie it off and kind of use multiple pieces of twine here and there uh, in order to sort of get the effect I want. And you can probably tell why I put the screws back in. That's because I'm going to use those as anchor points. I'm actually going to start off by tying to one of those screws. Uh, and then once I've tied off there, we're just going to get into this thing and uh, do a nice little wrap job. You ready for the time lapse? Let's hit it. Now let me say a couple of words about spray paint on plastic stocks like this because you might be surprised to find out that it can actually be pretty durable. Um, if you look at the manufacturer's recommendations on the back of the spray can, it'll say something about curing time and how you want to give it quite a bit of time to fully cure. I mean, there's drying time, but then there's curing time. And if you do in fact give it all the curing time that the manufacturer recommends, plus maybe another coat after it's fully cured, you're gonna find that regular spray paint like this is actually quite durable, particularly on plastic. It really does bond to the plastic and it creates not only a great uniform color, but it actually stays on there for quite a long time. So I'm a big fan of using cheap, inexpensive, but quality spray paint like this uh, on rifle stocks because it looks good, it holds up pretty well, I'm a fan. All right, I think I'm done. Yeah, we're gonna call that done. And it's a little wild and haphazard looking, but once we get some paint on that, you're gonna see this kind of a interesting, cool pattern. And I think I'm gonna be happy with this. Now, the twine is loose in places, and that's actually fine. You can kind of smash it around, mush it around with your fingers, whatever you wanna do. Uh, and it doesn't matter if there are gaps, sort of gaps of air between um, pieces of twine and so forth. That doesn't matter at all. Uh, you want to, um, you want to, just want to make sure that there's coverage, that there's going to be some masking. So as you begin to paint this, uh, that the twine creates a cool pattern, creates some cool lines of black uh, between all that tan. You know what? Am I done? I'm going to do a little bit more down here at the stock. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I think I'm just gonna spread those lines out a little bit. Again, they get to be kind of loose as you begin to sort of uh, push those uh, or do the whole wrapping job. Bits of it gets kind of loose. That's all fine though, that's all fine. All right, we are done. We're gonna go ahead and cut that last bit off. And from this point forward, we are ready to hang this thing up and spray paint it. So let's get to that. And that is it guys, job done. It's time for the big reveal. We're gonna get this twine off of here and see what the rifle stock looks like in its complete form. Before I do that, one more word about curing and sort of the coating that I put on this. So I did just one full coat on this rifle. If I wanted this to have maximum durability, what I would do is a full coat 
followed by several days of curing, followed by another full coat, followed by several days of curing, and then I would unwrap it all, and that should have maximum durability, at least per manufacturer's recommendations. And I've actually done that, followed that exact uh, procedure on other rifle stocks, and found them to be extremely durable. So I would highly recommend that you do that if you want maximum durability. However, if you just want a cool look, and you're not concerned about scratches and a little bit flaking off here and there over time, yeah, just, just give it one good coat, wait maybe 24 hours, peel off your stuff, and start using it. And that's basically what we're going to do right now. So let's start cutting away some of this twine and see how it looks. That's it, guys. <laughs> That is it. Nice. Ah, I got to say, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. That is cool looking. Now, I could say one or two more things about this job overall. You can see that it is very two-tone, all right? And it's very either gray, either, I should say, either black or tan. I almost said gray. I don't know why I said gray. But it's either black or tan. And what you can do to sort of give it even more sort of texture is just hit it with some either some solid tan or some solid black very lightly in a few spots and just kind of be very judicious about that but uh, that's something you can do to give it sort of even more of a natural tone a natural sort of gradation in tone and color and that'll look really cool too uh, i'm going to leave it as it is right now because i think it looks perfectly cool just the way it is i, I hope you agree but i'm very very stoked with this uh, the last thing we would do, oh, before I get into that, you can see this is the reason why I went with twine. Look at that. All those little fibers translate into this incredibly cool texture of masking. No sharp lines, very kind of natural looking lines. Okay, It's the stuff that you really find in nature as far as, you know, the... Uh, sort of the intricacy and the, the haphazardness and the randomness of all this masking and all these lines. It kind of has this cool depth to it that feels very realistic and again, feels like the real world. That's what I love about this, this process for creating camo. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Last thing I'm gonna do, put on these sling swivels. And with that done, all I wanna do now is put on that buttstock plate. Just like that. And you can see that my screws got some of the paint. I honestly don't mind that. I think it's gonna create a cool looking accent. <laughs> see what I mean? A little tan accent there with the screw, pretty cool. That's the job done, guys. Obviously, we put that plate back on in order to uh, re-engage sort of the, the magazine well and have that ready to go. But aside from that, job done. I am loving this thing, guys. I don't know what you think, but I'd actually love to hear. Tell me down in the comment section, do you like this kind of a job? Are you going to do this sort of thing to your rifle stock? What would you do to change it and make it, make it maybe even better than this? I'd love to hear about it. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I've been the Lay Boy Scout. Y'all be good.